Meet Steve Benner, a synthetic chemist. He's at the Foundation for Applied Molecular Evolution, and I sat down and talked with him at, during a pause of an astrobiology meeting in Arizona, and here he is explaining something very important about the origin of life and biochemistry. He's at this Foundation for Applied Molecular Evolution, and here's this uh, website of fame. He's also written a book called Life, the Universe, and the Scientific Method. He's a font of information about biochemistry, and let's hear what he has to say about the origin of life and are we alone? I'm a molecular biologist, biochemist who works at the Foundation for Applied Molecular Evolution. What do we know about this probability of life originating on these other wet, rocky right. planets? So you, you don't have astronomical numbers, if I may use that word. I mean, you have 10 to the 11th galaxies and 10 to the 11th stars per galaxy, say one rocky planet per star. So that's 10 to the 22. That's an astronomical number. No, it isn't. Oh, well, you're <laughs> dealing with Avogadro's number. You're normalizing yeah, Avogadro. Uh, exactly. Well, I mean, the, it's an interesting. So now the next question is we do have. Go ahead. We do have uh, uh, more information. We do know that life ar arose here. And also, we know that the sun has, shall we say, five billion years of productive history. Our case, life is certainly here before 10% of that history has been used up. I mean, it's interesting. 90% of the life of the star has been used up to get intelligence, at least what you and I would call intelligence. So you can make the argument that if we had been a little bit slower to get intelligent life, the star would be gone or we would have turned into a red giant. It's not 90. It's not 90. It's 50. Oh, well, it depends on where you consider the sun to have expanded to make the Earth no longer in the habitable that's right, zone. That's right. So that's then then you're right. Then it's 90. But who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. but the point is that life on Earth emerged in 10 per It only took 10% of the time. Or less, maybe 1%. Yeah, or even less, exactly. And so that's the argument for, and since there's a, I think 10 to the 22 rocky planets is not a bad number to, to, as a guess for what there is available to work with. So I, the fact that on Earth, we had life in, with, within 5 or 10% of the life the, of the time that we have available, mm -hmm. means that we are probably not alone cosmically. Now, so you think so it happened life, rapidly, therefore it's likely. That's it happened rapidly on Earth, that's right. So, and you've got stars, you know, some of these brown dwarfs that are relatively stable, uh, they, they'll last a lot longer. So when you're going to go look for intelligent life, now that's likely to be scarce in the universe because it took so long on Earth to get to the point. You would go look uh, around a, a, a star with a longer intrinsic lifetime. Astrobiologists sometimes say, if we can find features among the life forms on Earth that have evolved independently, mm. then those features become the best candidates for the features we should expect elsewhere. What do you think of that logic? No. Why? Well, because you even if they've evolved independently, they have a common starting point. So they haven't evolved independently. They haven't evolved independently. Okay. Now, I, I suppose if you could do what Paul Davies would love to do, it, or, or Felisa Wolf Simon would like to do, is find a second alternative example of life on Earth that had a genesis different from you and me, we would we would have something to talk about. But right now. What we are seeing is independent evolution in different environments, and what you really see is the reworking of the same old parts to manage different needs for survival. If life has emerged in any arbitrary environment, and it's gotten to be multicellular, so it has this macro physiology, if it flies, it will have adapted the same, uh, have, it would have the convergence in the sense that Simon Conway Morris sees convergence in Tasmanian versus placental animals, but it will have different m detailed molecular bases. The question, are we alone, is that an important question? Well, I mean, how are you going to spend your life? I mean, big question, what am I going to have for lunch this afternoon? Uh, uh, I mean, who do I marry? There are all sorts of much more constructive, imminent questions which are important to my happiness and well-being. But yeah, once you're going to get yourself into the big philosophical question, I think this is a bigger one than, you know, does God exist? That, that devolves into semantics often. But are we alone is one of the bigger questions which you can talk about. Yeah, I think it is quite important.